Hello, welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, for February 3rd, 2024. Here, we will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the Bread of Life. Our goal is to hear all of the Bible by the end of December 2024, to increase our faith, to please the Heavenly Father, to walk in that abundance that the Lord, our Lord and Savior came and suffered and died that we would walk in, and to do the works that he said we would do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Well, the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 reads, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Romans 10, 17, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Further, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. The book of Romans chapter 10, verse 10, The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Further, the book of John chapter 14, verse 12 reads, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And the book of John, chapter 15, verse 7, reads, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. John fourteen sixteen through 17, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. John fourteen twenty six. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. And John sixteen thirteen. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. John sixteen sixty three. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. And so the words of life that we shall hear today, February 3rd, are Psalm 85, Proverbs 3, Old Testament reading, the book of Exodus, chapter 13, verse 1 through chapter 14, verse 31, and the book of John, chapter 6, verse 1 through verse 35. Our prayer focus will be from the book of John, chapter 6, verse 37 through 34, and the book of Psalm, chapter 115, verse 13 through 14. And now, Psalm, the theme of Psalm 85. From reverence to restoration, rever rever reverence lends to forgiveness, restoring our love and joy for God. I'd like to thank every listener of Jesus for all too. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that your faith is increasing, your knowledge of the promises of God, and that you are receiving the grace to walk in those promises. I would ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you would share Jesus for all too with another, that you would subscribe, and that you would give it a thumbs up if it is acceptable in thy sight in the name of jesus christ all scriptures in the introduction were mostly from the new king james version copyright 1982 by thomas nelson incorporated used by permission all rights reserved and our he hearing of the psalm and the proverbs will be from the New King James Version. The other he readings will be from the Amplified Version of the Bible, copyright 1954, 1958, 1962, 1964, 1965, 1987 by the Lockman Foundation. Amen and amen in Jesus' name. And now Psalm 85. Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captivity of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered all their sin. Selah. You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned from the fierceness of your anger. 
Restore us, O God, of our salvation, and cause your anger toward us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not receive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Verse 7. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Verse 8. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. Verse 9. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed. 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Verse 13 and last. Righteousness will go before him, and shall make his footsteps our pathway. Praise the Lord, and in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, are every of us the hear us. And now Proverb 3. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands, for length of days and long life and peace will they add to you. Verse 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will flow with new wine. Verse 11 My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. 12 For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father the son in whom he delights. Verse 13, happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all those who retain her. 19. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up, and clouds dropped down the dew. 21. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, so there will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down, and your sleep will be sweet. 25. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence, and will keep your foot from being caught. 27. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is in the power of your hand to do so. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come back, and tomorrow I will give it, when you have it with you. 29. Do not devise evil against your neighbor, for he dwells by you for safety's sake. Do not strive with a man without cause, if he has done you no harm. And 31. Do not envy the oppressor, and choose none of his ways, for the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord, but his secret counsel is with the upright. The curse of the Lord is, an, is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the house of the just. 34. Surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. Verse 35 and last. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the legacy of fools. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, are every of us the hearers. The book of Exodus, 
chapter 13. The Lord said to Moses, Sanctify, consecrate, set apart to me all the firstborn males. Whatever is first to open the womb among the Israelites, both of man and of beast, is mine. And Moses said to the people earnestly, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage and bondmen. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. No leavened bread shall be eaten. For this day you go forth in the month Abib. 5. And when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Hivites, and Jebusites, which he promised and swore to your fathers to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of plenty, you shall keep this service in this month. 6. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. 7. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No unleavened bread shall be seen with you, neither shall there be leaven in all your territory. 8. You shall explain to your son on this that day, This is done because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. 9. It shall be as a sign to you upon your hand, and as a memorial between your eyes, that the law of the Lord may be in your mouth, for with a strong hand the Lord has brought you out of Egypt. You shall therefore keep this ordinance at this time from year to year. And when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he promised and swore to you and your fathers, and shall give it to you, twelve, you shall set apart to the Lord all the first that first opens the womb. All the firstlings of your livestock that are males shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem by substituting it a lamb, or if you will not redeem it, then you shall break its neck, and every firstborn among your sons you shall redeem. And when in time to come your sons ask you, What does this mean? You shall say to him, By strength of hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of bondage and bondmen. Verse 15 For when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let you go, the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and of livestock. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all the males that first opened the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. Verse 16 And it shall be as a reminder upon your hand, or as frontlets between your eyes. For by a strong hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt. When Pharaoh let the people go, God led them not by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was nearer, for God said, Least the people change their purpose when they see war and return to Egypt. 18. But God led the people around by way of the wilderness, toward the Red Sea, and the Israelites went up, marshaled in ranks, out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For Joseph had strictly warned the Israelites, saying, Surely God will be with you, and you must carry my bones away from here with you. 20. They journeyed from Sokoth and encamped at Etham, at the edge of the wilderness. The Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. 22. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. Chapter 14. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp before Phi Hararoth, between Migdal and the Red Sea, before Baal Zephon, you shall encamp opposite by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the Israelites, they are entangled in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. I will harden, make stubborn, strong Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them, and I will gain honor and glory over Pharaoh and all his host. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, and they, sh and they did so. 5. It was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was changed toward the people, and they said, What is this we have done? We have let Israel go from serving us. And he made ready his chariots and took his army, seven, and took six hundred chosen chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. 8. The Lord made hard and strong the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites, for they left proudly and defiantly. 
The Egyptians pursued them all, pursued them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them and camped at the Red Sea by Phi Harith Hiroth, in front of Baal Zephon. When Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked up, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and the Israelites were exceedingly frightened and cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you treated us this way and brought us out of Egypt? 12. Did we not tell you in Egypt, let us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. 13. Moses told the people, Fear not, stand still, firm, confident, undismayed, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians you have seen today, you shall, you shall never see again. 14. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace and remain at rest. 15. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, and the Israelites shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. 17. And I, behold, I will harden, make stubborn and strong the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall go into the sea after them. And I will gain honor over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots and his horsemen. 18. The Egyptians shall know and realize that I am the Lord when I have gained honor and glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. 19. And the angel of God, who went before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before them and stood behind them. Coming from the host of Egypt and the host of Israel, it was a cloud and darkness to the Egyptians, but it gave light by night to the Israelites, and the one host came not near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. 22. And the Israelites went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. 23. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. 24. And in the morning, watch, the Lord through the pillar of fire and cloud looked down on the host of the Egyptians and discomforted them, and bound, clogged, took off their chariot wheels, making them drive heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their horsemen. 27. So Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its strength and normal flow when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled into it, being met by it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians and shook them off into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all the hosts of Pharaoh that pursued them. Not even one of them remained. 29. But the Israelites walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right and on their left. 30. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Verse 31 and last, And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did against the Egyptians, and the people reverently feared the Lord, and trusted and relied on, remained steadfast to the Lord and to his servant Moses. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our every of us that hear us. The book of John, chapter 6. After this, Jesus went to the farther side of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd was following him because he had, they had seen the signs, miracles, which he continually performed upon those who were sick. And Jesus walked up the mountainside and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was approaching. 
Jesus looked up then, and seeing that a vast multitude was coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these all may eat? But he said this to prove, test him, for he knew, for he well knew what he was about to do. 7. Philip answered him, Two hundred pennies, forty dollars worth of bread is not enough that every one may receive even a little. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a little boy here who has with him five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many people? 10. Jesus said, Make all the people recline, sit down. Now the ground, a pasture, was covered with thick grass at the spot. So the men threw themselves down, about five thousand in number. 11. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to the reclining people. So also he did with the fish, as much as they wanted. 12. When they had all had enough, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments, the broken pieces that are left over, so that nothing may be lost and wasted. So accordingly they gathered them up, and they filled twelve small hand baskets with fragments left over by those who had eaten from the five barley loaves. When the people saw the sign miracle that Jesus had performed, they began saying, Surely, and beyond a doubt, this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Then Jesus, knowing that they meant to come and seize him, that they might make him king, withdrew again to the hillside by himself alone. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, and they took a boat and were going across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and still Jesus had not yet come back to them. Verse 18. Meanwhile, the sea was getting rough and rising high because of a great and violent wind that was blowing. 19. However, when they had rowed three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and approaching the boat. And they were afraid, terrified. But Jesus said to them, It is I, be not afraid. I am. Stop being frightened. 21. Then they were quite willing and glad for him to come into the boat. And now the boat went at once to the land they had steered toward. And immediately they reached the shore, toward which they had been slowly making their way. Verse 22. The next day, the crowd that still remained standing on the other side of the sea realized that there had been only one small boat there and that Jesus had not gone into it with his disciples, but his dis disciples had gone away by themselves. 23. But now some other boats from Tiberias had come in near the place where they ate the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So the people finding that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there themselves got into the small boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, you have been searching for me, not because you saw the miracles and signs, but because you were fed with the loaves and were filled and satisfied. 27. Stop toiling and doing and producing for the food that perishes and decomposes in the using but strive and work and produce rather for the lasting food, which endures continually into life eternal. The Son of Man will give, furnish you that. For God the Father has authorized and certified him and put his seal of endorsement upon him. Then they said, they then said, what are we to do that we may habitually be working the works of God? What are we to do to carry out what God requires? Verse 29, Jesus replied, This is the work, service, that God asks of you, that you believe in the one whom he has sent, that you cleave to, trust, rely on, and have faith in his messenger. Therefore they said to him, What sign, miracle, wonder work will you perform then, so that we may see it and believe and rely on and adhere to you? What supernatural work have you to show what you can do? 31. Other forefathers, our forefathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as the scripture says. He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. 32. Jesus then said to them, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, 
Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. What Moses gave you was not the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread. Verse 33. For the bread of God is he who comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. But they said to him, Lord, give us. And they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always, all the time. Verse 35 and last for today. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. And he who believes in and cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me will never thirst any more at any time. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. In from the book of John, chapter 37, verse 41, and it reads, All whom my Father gives in trust to me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out. I will never, no, never reject one of them who comes to me. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will and purpose, but to do the will and purpose of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should not lose any of all that he has given me, but that I should give new life and raise them up, and raise them all up at the last day. Verse 40 and last. For this is my Father's will and his purpose, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in and cleaves to and trusts in and relies on him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up from the dead at the last day. Amen. And this word is already blessed as we pray our every of us to hear us. And let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for loving me and giving me to Jesus, that I may love him as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for mercy both now and forever. The forgiveness of my sins in the name of Jesus Christ. For giving me for giving me new life now and raising me up at the last day. And Psalm 115, 14, Father, thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for increasing me more and more in health, in mind, in spirit, both me, my children, my family, and my church brethren. Bless me, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Give me the grace to take dominion on this earth. Teach me to make wealth. In Jesus' name, bless me, O Lord, as you said you would. And make me fruitful and multiplying in all ways for your kingdom on earth and in heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, bless the work of my hands, my health, my storehouses, and your glory in my life. So we thank you for Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that as we have received your word, your holy Son, Jesus, the Lamb of God, our Redeemer and Lord, we have been healed. That name that is above every name, that name to which everything must bow. Father, we have been healed by the stripes and by the name that is above everything. And we thank you, Father, for the deliverance from every destructive thing in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name.